Can you tell me um, what goes through your mind when you think about the 20th anniversary of what the world came to know as the Heaven's Gate suicide? Um, well, that is an opportunity for the world to take another look at the reality that T and Do were the return of the Father and Jesus. You believe T and Do were the return of the Father and Jesus? Yes. Based on what? Based on the Bible, based on the New Testament, based on everything that they said and did. They said they came from the evolutionary level above human. That was a physical kingdom. And that it was the same, they were from the same family as Jesus was from. And uh, <clears throat> uh, they said originally that um, they were not Jesus. That Jesus was the name of the body. That a member from the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, took over. It was planned to take over in order to perform the task at that time. But I guess people watching this story would say, would Jesus lead his followers to suicide? Well, uh, yes, he did. He did. And when he, when he said to his disciples, right before he was going to turn himself in to be killed, which he knew he would, would happen, and he actually said, actually, that no man takes my life from me. He said, I, I'm giving my life. I'm laying down my life for my brother. It's the greatest love that you can show. And uh, he was giving his life for his father uh, in, the, in the task that he was given to do. And that, uh, so he said to his disciples that they would have to drink the same cup of his blood. They would have to pick up their cross and bear it. And that was a direct reference to they would give their blood. They would die for him. We, by telling the information, by expressing because they would hate him because they they would hate them because they hated their master. They does this Jesus. answer the question that um, people may have, and that is um, um, why did those 38 followers commit suicide? Well, because Doe determined that it was time to leave and that the handwriting was on the wall that their exit wasn't going to happen any other way. And he didn't feel like his older member T would have them just die off one by one by some disease or something. And they had exhausted all the ways of telling the truth that might get them bumped off, and nothing happened. So it became a, uh, a decision that they weren't that comfortable with 100%, because they were, they were still thinking it was possible that they could leave without losing their life. And they also thought it was possible that even after they drank the poison, the, uh, the, bar the barbiturate mixture, uh, that, uh, that T could actually step in there and decide that to heal them all and, and take them with their bodies onto a spacecraft and take them someplace else in the world to do a task. You know, they didn't know those things because those things weren't all laid out because the, the, the way an older member actually does things uh, they do things in steps. They get an instruction, they get an understanding, and they put it into motion. And then as they're putting it into motion, they're asking, is this the right way? Is this the way to do it? Is this what you're thinking? You know? And then they take the signals they get from the circumstances as approval or not. It's not like uh, the kingdom of God you know, says to them, do, 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 do this and do that, you know, blah, 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 go there. You know? Not like that. It doesn't work that way. 
Um, Although it could. I mean, the kingdom of God could do that if they want to. Tell me what it was like. In, I, I heard that. I, we're going to have to deal with the radiator noise and so on. Uh, what was it like inside the group? What was life like? Um, it was pleasant. It was um, functional, very functional. Um, it was uh, lighthearted. It was serious. It was uh, difficult um, because of uh, increasing requirements to, like for instance, if you woke up and you were like, you know, I need my cup of coffee, which we didn't drink coffee, but if you were like down in the mouth, uh, that was an acceptable countenance. If you didn't want to be there, then you shouldn't be there. But if you wanted to be there, then it was like, get up, and we even they even gave us little routines to get up and, you know, it's a it's a brand new day, you know, kind of thing, you know, to to get your vibration up and countenance, you know, not that you would walk around with a smile all the time, that would be an extreme, but to have a pleasant view, even though you may be going through hell in your head, you know, whether wondering whether you can conquer the demons that you have. You say you weren't allowed coffee. What things were you not allowed? A lot of things were not allowed because it wasn't a matter of, uh, just for the record, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't totally against pleasure. But the pleasure had to be what the teachers gave you as to be pleasure. Meaning? That if they, if they didn't call it, if they didn't give it to you to do, then it wasn't appropriate. That sounds like a cult leader. That's right. That's right. It is a cult leader. What Doe called it was the cult of cults, and he also called it the cult of truth. Um, you were comfortable. But it's like the military also. It's like corporations. It's like a lot of things to where you got to follow the rules. And if you don't want to follow the rules, don't go to school. You know, Don't go to that school. There was, no, there was no locks on the doors. Well, there were from people coming in. But you could leave in the middle of the night, and many people did. So you acknowledge that Heaven's Gate was a cult? Yes. You remember that cult? Yes, absolutely. Uh, people from the outside who don't... A subculture. Okay. You know. People from the outside who don't understand the intricacies of the teachings will look at it and say, this was a cult, and this was a cult leader who led his disciples to mass suicide. Well, certainly, if uh, if Doe wasn't there and hadn't led them, and T and Doe hadn't led them in that direction, those individuals probably never would have committed suicide. So, in that sense, he did. They did lead them to taking that final act. But, but to think that those individuals were so naive, or so uninformed, or so mesmerized. Uh, uh, so that they didn't know exactly what they were doing and willfully doing that, that's a misnomer. That's a inaccurate. Because I know from personal experience and many, many examples that they were all there. On, well, I can't speak for the ones that joined in 1994, but the 24 or so that were there uh, from 1975 as I was, I can speak for, I believe. You say there were of sound mind is as far as you know why did they kill themselves because it was time to leave and uh and, and there's there's a schedule to this their time on earth uh there were so there weren't those bodies actually there there were souls that took over those bodies those bodies were prepared for them from birth um in a, in a way that the next level does that by actually putting a seed, like Jesus talked about, sowing of seeds. But that doesn't answer the question why they chose that time to kill themselves en masse. Well, they took the, the sign of the uh, hale -Bopp Comet in combination with all the years that they were anticipating leaving and all the, all the thing, all their, their attempts to tell the public what they were about, all that was done. They had nothing else to do. And, 
and they got instructions that uh, to keep in motion the plan. They had the plan to leave by their own hand from when I was in the group. Because at the end of the 1994 public meeting spree that we did, um, those said, you know, when, when nobody really cared about us, they weren't coming to the meetings. And we had one reporter at the New, New Hampshire meeting that I gave, that I spoke at. Uh, and uh, so those said, you know, the, the public doesn't care about what we're saying, uh, even though we're telling them that, you know, we, we came from the next level. And, and, uh, and so we might have to take it upon ourselves to, to lay down our bodies. And then at that point, that was like August of uh, 1994. Then well, he, we all traveled back to California and got back some of the old jobs that we had. And, uh, and then Doug got the whole group together with the new members as well. I came from the 94 uh, recruiting session because they didn't recruit all the time. They only recruited in two different periods of time within 17 years in between. But uh, he got, got us all together and he, and he said, um, we want to talk more about taking it upon ourselves to leave. And here's how we would do it. And he described drinking a barbiturate. I don't think he mentioned the vodka um, or the applesauce. I don't remember any of that. But uh, he said that, um, I'm trying to remember better, uh, but he went, he went person by person. He said, I want to know anybody that's got reservations. And he went person by person, looked at each person and expected to hear something from them. And one or two said, yes, I definitely am not in it for that. And they left the next day. What did you say? I said, uh, yes, I'm ready to do that. Even though, in a sense, I was having misgivings. But I was so confused uh, that, uh, that I was perfectly willing to leave at that time by doing that. Even you mean though leave the group or? No, leave, leave the, by so, ingesting a... a so you, so did, did you ever consider suicide? Yes. No, when, when he talked about that, I didn't have any reservations. I mean... You know that people let think... Me, let me, no, talk, people, let me people tell think, you something about reservations. Because the big part of the group was that the way you get to the heaven is by overcoming the human. The vehicle is necessary for that. We need to have our bodies in order to learn lessons. It's crucial. You can't do it any other way that I know about uh, and uh, that Tiendo talked about. And so the overcoming process means overriding things that might be natural to the vehicle. The body doesn't want to die generally, right? And, and the mind is part of the body. I'm not talking about just the brain. I'm talking about the, the spirit as equivalent with mind. Um, which occupies a soul, but I want to get, get off the track. But uh, but the, the object is for that soul to take control of that body, so that body is a servant of the soul. So a reservation, you might have a reservation, like Doe asked me actually right before the castrations, when I was supposed to be castrated, I wanted to be castrated. And uh, why castration? Well, wait a minute. Uh, he asked me uh, what, when we were right there in that operating room uh, about to have the first castration. Um, he asked me, "Do you have any reservations?" I said, "I said, well, my vehicle doesn't really want my body. We call them vehicles. My vehicle really isn't looking forward to it. But I'm overriding my vehicle. Those are my exact words." And he said, hmm, he just you know, shook his head, he understood what I was saying. And then we flipped a coin to see who would go first between me and the other person. Uh, and, and he won the coin toss. And that was made a big joke of in the New York Times, in the, in the Time Magazine when I gave that story in 1997. Did he win? Because I won, the, I lost the coin toss and so I didn't get castrated. 
if, if I won the coin toss, I would have been castrated did, first. Did you, did you win or lose? Well, that's a matter of perspective. I mean, am I in the right place right now? I guess I am because um, I'm here and I'm still connected. I'm still trying to be connected. So I'm going to get another chance. In the set. We all get lots of chances, you know. But the why, why, like why the castration in, inside the group? Well, for a long time, when Doe was considering castration, because it was years in the making, um, he was concerned that a lot of the strength that a, a soul gets when taking over a human vehicle comes from telling that vehicle no to sensuality, no to sexual thoughts, no to wanting to have a relationship, no to wanting to get your rocks off uh, playing a rugged football game, you know, no to, no to all that sensation, that, that passion, that's a human passion, and nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with any of that on the human level. But to make it to the next level where they don't have any of that, you have to prepare your soul for that, which is the mental preparation, and you have to be able to say no. So th you're overriding, is what I'm saying. Uh, so you might have a reservation, but you're overriding that reservation and saying, no, I don't have a reservation. I mean, you may think that's not, not honest, but uh, it depends on whether you believe a soul really exists and you know all that. You know. Where do you think those 39 people are today? They're on spacecraft, or maybe multiple spacecrafts. Could be inside of a planet, could be inside Pluto, could be inside Cirrus, dwarf planet Cirrus, or inside Saturn, or the moon maybe, because there's some indications that the moon might be a spacecraft. You honestly believe that? I believe it's possible. I don't know exactly where they are. I don't know which of those are the spacecrafts. Because uh, when I say I know something, it's because I believe 100% of my teachers that if they said it or indicated it, then I feel like I know it. I know other things, you know, but from my own experience, like if I take a mash and I burn myself, I'm not, I know I'm gonna, mm -hmm. it's going to pain, you know. Right. But, but, but you know, other than that, I don't know anything. You've been listening to and preaching this gospel for most of your life now, correct? True, yeah. You tell us that... Uh, I'm 24. It's beautiful outside, look at that. Um, you tell us that um, your wife left you because she, your partner left you because she didn't believe, correct? Well, I wouldn't put it that way. Uh, How would you put it? What no, did she, she, she doesn't believe in what I believe in, okay? That's that's for sure. I mean, but she, she uh, but that's not the reason that she left me. Uh, I mean, she tried to kick me out actually first, but I wouldn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, uh, you're gonna have to drag me out of here. Uh, but anyway, but you uh, with that bouncing on the the banging on the floor. It's sorry, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Um. But she doesn't. No, she, but what happened was our relationship deteriorated because I put, I started putting more and more energy into my writing and talking on the internet with people about him and the gate and all that. And so basically, the house was suffering, you know. And she wanted me to fix this and fix that, and, and I didn't. Sometimes I didn't really know how to do it, and, you know. And so, I, not that I wasn't doing some things, but I, I was doing things, but I wasn't doing as much as she wanted. And um, and then we had some arguments to where I, I you know we talked talked about God and stuff and and you know I did say some things that um, I guess uh, put her on the defensive in a sense as if like I know it all and she doesn't and and that didn't go over well either and so you know the, all those things caused our relationship to go downhill and that was pretty much the brunt of uh, why we broke up. But the way I see it is that it was a, it was a joint response of, of the next level on their spacecrafts, members, uh, helping everybody have what they wanted. They helped her have what she wanted, be without me. 
by bringing another man into her life that she fell in love with. And that man was my music buddy, who I invited to come into the house to fall in love with my ex-wife, or ex-partner, because we weren't married. But, uh, and, and he needed a place to live, and that's why I wanted to help him. So, but, but he was freaking out when she was making, coming on to him. And I, I told him, I said, go with it. I said, it's painful for me, but go with it, because we're done. Yeah. And we need to get it over with. And so then it ended up moving out a couple months later. And uh, who are you with now? Anyone? No. Actually, I, I tried to date at first, and, uh, and Doe came to me in a dream. And he said, uh, how about being loyal to me? That wasn't the first dream I had with Doe. It was, I had many dreams with Doe. You know? He said, how about being, staying loyal to me? What does being loyal to Doe mean? The same as like, uh, like Jesus talked about, he was the groom and uh, that his bride was the church, the believers. Um, in other words, you give all your passion to him, all your love to him, like, like Jesus and Moses taught, that uh, the number one commandment was to love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And then the second commandment was to love your neighbor as yourself. Because loving your neighbor as yourself, when the older member is not physically with you, is, is the way to show that you love God. Right. Because God gave you that instruction. And you actually you said that, that when Doe was here, you guys made a commitment to each other. Yes, we what? made commit. Well, actually, T is the one who told us, the class, to make our commitment to Doe. What does that mean, making a commitment to Doe? Well, I, I didn't really know what it meant at first. Uh, but what it ended up being was that uh, T instigated a lot, everything, actually. And that's why I have a lot of fault with uh, people that say that, you know, uh, that Doe freaked out after T left and then because he was a homosexual when he was before he was awakened that he was uh, um, you know playing that out with the class and led them to suicide because he was upset with his homosexuality which is a bunch of baloney but what, was he a, a reformed homosexual was he previously homosexual well there is no sexuality in the next level so about a year be he said about a year before he met T he uh, was uh, uh, stopping his, uh, I don't know if he completely stopped his sexuality, but he was living with a man. Uh, but, he, but his problem with homosexuality was, not the, not the sex part of it, was that he couldn't find a partner that was committed, a committed relationship. He wanted a committed relationship. I know he I'm wasn't going, finding that. I know I'm going all over the place, so please it's forgive okay. me. It's okay. Um, you let's, cut let's, this in your Yeah, wait, let's, let's talk about... Um, <laughs> What, what I told you about the, the imagery that I'm left with from Heaven's Gate, and that is these people, these members who were laying peacefully in bed, wearing some sort of, uh, I don't know if it was a gym outfit and sneakers. What was the deal with it? With why, why this uniform and sneakers? Well, like I said to you before we were preparing for this interview, uh, the sneakers, I believe, were, they, they went out, it was a sale, that uh, they get all those sneakers for a good price, and that was always T and Doe. T was always like, you know, looking for sales for the group, because she was very frugal. And, uh, but, it, but the, the saying that went with those sneakers was, do it, just do it. They're basically saying, it's time to just do it, you know, take that leap of faith. And that was a leap of faith for them, because because they had no proof that you know Doe was who he said he was. I mean, no no physical proof that a human could say is proof. Uh, uh, they had proof in their minds, you know, and their observations of of T and Doe. But so that's with that. But as far as the rest of the garments that they wore, 
Uh, I mean, it wasn't uncommon for us to wear all the same kind of things because the object in the next level, what you wear is not important. Uh, there is no dressing up for the occasion. Uh, if you put on actual a physical body, actually, to the next level, is like a suit of clothing. Like Doe compared it to like a, a scuba diver would put on, you know, a diving bell or whatever, you know, uh, to go underwater. Or a spaceman would put on a, a spacesuit. And the next level, the soul body actually puts on a physical body that's more dense, which is like grown on a vine, like a plant. You know, grown to a, a adulthood. Uh, and they can have all different kinds of physical bodies. One could even be a spacecraft. You know, I, I like you, and I gotta tell you this right now, no offense, but to me, this all sounds a little wacky. I understand that. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, and, and Doe talked about that too. He said when he was awakening, after he was with T the first year, sometime during that period, actually, actually I know exactly when it was, it was when he got out of jail which is a, a story that, you know, was, which is uh, the Thief in the Night story. But uh, uh, he had to take a psycho... When they, when they were arrested, the names they gave to the police were Sanskrit names that a Tibetan monk gave them. Right. You're making a long story longer. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, but this is... Yeah. To me, okay. this is so interesting. Okay. And it's, uh, it's so appropriate. But make know? it quick because okay. you're making it long. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so anyway, since he gave those names and, and, and the district attorney, after the charges were dropped against both of them, the district attorney in St. Louis decided to take up the case. What Doe said was to make points for his reelection. Uh, and, uh, and so he, he prosecuted Doe for the, keeping the rental car too long, uh, which was considered to be car theft, even though the rental car dropped the charges, but uh, when they got the car back. But, uh, but because of that, because of the story that they told about who they were, being from outer space and, and uh, being here to uh, 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 fulfill prophecy and to uh, bring updates to the Bible, those are the primary points that uh, they had awakened to at that point. Um, because they told that story, they made him take a psychological evaluation. And he passed with flying cover colors, even though what he said was in the 88 update that he wrote, he said that it wasn't a day that went by that he didn't think of himself insane. Doe said that? Yeah. Not a day went by he didn't think of himself insane? Yeah. Was Doe insane? It depends on what you, how you classify insanity. I mean, you know, what did, what did Einstein say insanity was? Doing the same thing over and over again, not changing or whatever. You know, when it doesn't expecting work, different expecting to get a better result, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I, I think it's insane to, uh, uh, to send a whole bunch of men over to Iraq, men and women over to Iraq to, to, kill, to kill people. I think that's insane. Insane! I'm angry about it. And I think it's just to be angry about it. So I guess the question is, what is insanity when you think about it? Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, is it insane to think that we've been created by... Anyway, I'm going on uh, about that, right? Why didn't... Hang Are you good? I, just I, need I, I heard you back there, yep. so I knew something Can was going on. Can we turn this off so the, the video isn't so, so large? Yep.